All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Heraclitus mod, which is being made by user Midweek Mouse 505 And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a beautiful new third moon orbiting around Kerbin here. And who doesn't like a nice new moon to explore? So let's uh, jump on into the tracking station and have a look at what we do get. Now, I do, of course, need to mention a dependency here. This, of course, being a planet slash, I guess, really more of a moon pack. You are going to be required to have Copernicus for this thing to function. And with that installed, you'll get our lovely new moon of Heraclitus, which, as you can see, sits in between the moon and Minmus and shares what seems to be a nearly identical orbital plane to the moon. In fact, it may be identical. I'm not entirely sure. It is just a little bit further out, which I quite like because, you know, you can practice with your space adventures by going to the moon first, then testing going out a little bit further to Heraclitus and then deeper on into the solar system, which is pretty cool. Now, another fun thing about this, though, is besides just being positionally in between the moon and Minmus, it's also very much stat-wise in between the two, being a bit smaller than the moon and, well, larger than Minmus, etc. So let's take at the stats we do get here with... Heraclitus. Now, size-wise, it has a radius of 120 kilometers. Gravity, it'll give you 0.14 Gs. It does have an escape velocity of 574 meters per second for you to get the heck out of Dodge. And atmospherically, it has none to speak of, which is really the one thing it shares with both the moons rather than being in between. Which, I don't quite know how you'd be in between an atmosphere and not an atmosphere, but hey, there you go. No atmosphere on this one. And I love the look of this thing. It is a very cool new little celestial body for you to go and explore, and it has a lot of cool features to it. Now, just right off the bat, the first thing I notice with this is the color. You know, it's not the same old, same old drab grays of the moon, and it's uh, not the weird mint ice cream of Minmus. It's, you know, a lot of nice oranges, yellows, some browns and grays, but with some interesting higher peaks with what may be snow. I'm not sure. There's really no good info here uh, for a description in the info panel. Uh, so yes, it could be snow-capped peaks or ice or something along those lines, just giving it some nice little pops to contrast with the rest of the coloring here. Now, as for the terrain, you got a lot of nice varying terrain with all sorts of hills hills and valleys and mountains, and a very, very interesting part for me that it actually took me a little while to notice because I, I kept landing on this side and exploring this part of this new moon. But if you flip around to the back, it's, um, well, it's more like just rolling sand dunes everywhere. It's no longer, you know, large mountains and valleys, but, well, pretty interestingly flat terrain all over the place, which I think is really cool. You get like an interesting little uh, potential peak here, where it's the sea of dunes with a bit of a hill at the very least right there, and then you get to the pole down here where it does get back to the more dramatic terrains. But yeah, I quite like that it's like half the moon is all rocky and whatnot, and then the other half is just not that. I think it's a pretty cool contrast for the exploration of this moon. Just adds a little bit more variety for you to have when exploring. Now, as for exploring, oh boy, did I learn some things because, well, I j honestly never really go much to Minmus. I don't really care much for that planet. Well, no, moon, rather. And so I'm not used to, like, the super low gravity areas, and I... I used a rover that I've used many times, the Butterfly Rover, on the moon. Uh, and over here, yeah, yeah, it doesn't work so great. It very much does start having that slidey sort of driving around. You start getting on places like Minmus. So definitely do keep that in mind. It is a very low gravity environment with this 0.14 Gs here. So uh, your landers will be fine. Any rover, yeah, you're probably going to want it to be a larger, heavier one to sort of compensate, question mark. 
but let's actually head over to our Viewmatic satellite and take a look at this thing from orbit to get a little bit more detail on it as, you know, we do get a bit better texturing as we do come out here into orbit. And I really do got to hand it to the mod maker here. It is not just a lovely planet terrain, terrain wise, but, you know, very nice on the texturing too. Very good quality on that. And again, I just like the coloring. It's, you know, a nice little change of pace from a lot of the other stuff we get in this system. Now, as for, if we do head down to the surface, let me turn back on all of this. Let's go down to my butterfly rover just to see the surface there. Now, overall, the actual main surface of the planet is, of course, very bleak with not really anything. It's just large open areas of hills and deserts, etc. for you to roll around in. But still, you know, a nice new rocky celestial world for you to explore. Now, I was actually hoping to sort of drive to one of the more interesting topographical areas, like perhaps up here. But um, again, because of the me not being used to going around areas with this little gravity, I kept, I kept rolling over this rover. Now, interestingly though, because of the gravity, you can do some tricks. I accidentally landed earlier when I was exploring a full barrel roll. <laughs> Wish I would have been recording for that. That was amusing. Well, yeah, it's just, you know, a nice little place to go and explore on, though. Yeah, again, with that gravity, you gotta watch your rover here. So otherwise, you end up popping wheelies constantly. Even though I've more or less turned off the reaction wheel in this thing. Good times. But yeah, overall, it's just a fun moon, and I'm quite intrigued by the name, too, because, well, being a lover of history and, you know, went to school for classics and all, I'm intrigued by the name because it's literally one letter off from the ancient Greek philosopher of Heraclitus, so I'm assuming it has something to do with him in some way, shape, or form. I could be wrong, though. I don't know enough about Heraclitus' work to actually make that determination, but, you know, it does make it for an interesting little thing about this uh, new moon that it may, may potentially be, uh, you know, related in some way, shape, or form to an ancient philosopher, which I just like. And yeah, all in all, it's just a cool little place to go out and explore. So if you'd like to ch take a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this one today. Hopefully you all have enjoyed you to come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. We There we go. Oh, land it, land it, land it. Oh, close. Darn. Later, folks.